Hello, Pocket Collector, Pocket Investor, and welcome to your mini Pokemart, a place where you can learn, invest, and buy. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the difference between speculator, investor, flipper, and collector, and why it's important to know in which bucket you're in for your future investments or a business, actually. So stay tuned if you're interested, and I'll see you soon. All right, before we start, if you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell in order to get informed every time we post a new video. All right, so let's just say, let's just start talking about the difference between an investor and a speculator, a collector and a flipper and why it's important and the roles of each one of them in the market. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is for you to understand in which bucket you're in uh, so that you can take the strategy that you want uh, that better fits that 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 uh, that specific role, right? Uh, <clears throat> it's important to know that because a lot of people say I'm investing when they're actually just flipping, or they are they say I'm flipping when they're actually investing or just collecting, right? So uh, it's very important to understand those different buckets, and it doesn't mean that you cannot be in two buckets at the same time, right? Or three, or all of them. You can you can maybe be on all of them at the same time. So let's start with the biggest one, which is the most dangerous one of all. <clears throat> and a lot of people might say, yeah, those flippers, but no, it's not the flippers, it's the speculators, okay? That's the most dangerous part, uh, role in any type of collectible hobby. And the reason why speculators are dangerous is not for the hobby itself or the market, it's for themselves. A speculator might might invest a lot of money and then don't, don't see any type of return, uh, finding itself in a very precarious situation where they didn't do their homework properly. <clears throat> so, what is an speculator? An speculator is someone that actually buys a, an asset today, let's say uh, a person that buys a Pokemon product today, and just based on a hunch or based on assumptions, uh, that person believes that this item is going to be very valuable in the future. And when we say future, it can vary in a speculator level. A speculator can say, yeah, this will be very valuable in a year. Uh, this will be very valuable in two, five, ten years, right? A speculator doesn't know. Uh, to put a, 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 an example, and I don't know if this is the case of a speculator, but just recently a BGS 10 shiny Charizard from Hidden Fates got sold for $10,100, which for me it's crazy because I don't have that data to back up that price. It was just something that speculators are just bidding in because they believe that that Charizard is going to become the next first edition based Charizard. So it is just based on assumptions and based on hunch that this card is actually going to be very valuable. Yeah, of course, you have the, you, you could probably say, but half, we have the previous data that shows that Shining Pokemon do very well. And yes, we have that data, but we don't have the data in this specific card, right? And that's very important, I'm going to repeat that because it's very important. We don't have the data in this specific card, okay? Like, it's not the same base set to Charizard to base set Charizard, right? They're completely different level. And this card, it's not a shining Charizard from Neo Destiny. This is a shining Charizard from Hidden Fates. So it's completely different. But anyway, I'm not going to rant anymore about the speculation in here. It's a danger to themselves. It's not a danger to the hobby. It could be a danger to the hobby when they inflate a lot of the prices. But in the end, there's people that will not be paying that kind of money, okay? <clears throat> and now, I put that VGS because I'm assuming it's a speculator that will believe it will get more value in the future, but it might be just a pure collector that doesn't care about the monetary value in the future, okay? And that's a kind of a segue to what a collector is. A collector is someone that actually just cares about an item because he or she likes it. You removed it from its original packaging. <gasps> no! It's no longer a collectible! Right? I love Mewtwo, for example. I collect Mewtwo and I love shiny Pokemon. I collect shiny Pokemon. <clears throat> now, not all Mewtwo's, for example, not all Mewtwo cards are going to be 
a big kind of investment. It's not going to be something that I care about the money it will return in the future. Of course, there are a lot of Mewtwo cards that will return more money in the future, but there are other ones that people don't simply care that much. So I'm, I'm, I'm certain that those will not return any money to me in the future, maybe a little bit, but not that much. Uh, and I just collect them because I like them, okay? I, I just love those kind of cards. <clears throat> so that is a collector. It's someone that actually uh, just don't care about the monetary value, just cares about the emotional attachment to that piece and that person goes and buys it because of those reasons and it's completely valid. I mean in the end this is a collectible card game or a collectible space, right? When you're buying a sculpture from uh, uh, from Mewtwo or a sculpture from Total Isle or any type of Pokemon that you care uh, and you don't necessarily care about the uh, value in the future, you just care about how it looks it's completely valid and we should have fun about collecting. It's the whole point about all of this, right? <clears throat> now, it doesn't mean that you cannot collect and be an investor at the same time. And uh, let's just talk about what an investor is. An investor basically does its homework. It goes and checks the item. It checks its condition. It makes sure that that asset is in the condition that that person wants it to be. And uh, it it analyzes the data and the trends and for people that doesn't know what trend is I might make another video so if you don't know what a trend is and you want me to make a video on a trend please let me know in the comment section because I would love to hear what kind of things you would like to learn this is something that I want this channel to be very open so if you have other ideas on on what you want to learn let me know in the comments but anyway um, <clears throat> so an investor basically does its homework as I showed in the in the first video of this channel and if you haven't checked it out go and check it out I'll leave a link in the description and in the information bubble over there where I explain how you can check Pokemon prices. An investor checks the current market the current prices it knows the value of that asset in the current market so that person knows for example that a base set first edition Charizard PSA 10 can go up for like $60,000 more or less right in today's market. So that's an investor. It does their homework. It knows the current price, the previous pa the previous price and maybe the future price. It makes wise decisions in maybe investing in a raw card and grading it because that person knows that if they grade it and save it for time uh, that asset will grow in value. <laughs> I like to buy 500 shares of Animotion Incorporated. Okay. Uh, now, before I execute this order, are you sure you understand the risks of stock ownership? Absolutely. We're in the money. We're in the money. Now, an investor usually doesn't buy something to just sell it right away. An investor buys something to actually save it for at least five years. And it's at least right in the collectible space it can be more and the last one talking about how much an investor holds the the the, the asset let's talk about flippers now flippers it's a very controversial a lot of people doesn't like the word flippers but that's essentially what they are they flip an asset they they flip it for a higher price so they buy it cheap they flip it for a higher price and for people that are in the flipper business, it could also be called like retail arbitrage, where you find something more cheap in somewhere else and then you resell it to another person in a higher price. So that's a flipper. A flipper actually goes and look into the current value of, of things. A flipper knows the current value very well, but it doesn't care about the future value in five years. It just cares about the current value and if, if he or she can find that asset in a lower price. So let's say that person found a uh, Shining Mewtwo that it's way below, below the, the, the market price. Let's say it's a first edition Shining Mewtwo, which usually a PSA 10 goes for about a thousand. A thousand twelve hundred dollars and it's at 300 bucks like super cheap this person will buy it will probably even sell it raw for like 600 bucks or it will just send it to PSA get it back at 10 and then flip it for twelve hundred dollars right 
you can make a lot of money flipping Pokemon cards. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It's just a matter that a flipper is not an investor, okay? A flipper and a speculator are not investors, okay? <clears throat> let's, let's make that difference a strong difference. Okay, and why it's important me, for me? Why it's important for me to tell you all of these differences? It's important because if you're in a journey of maybe making some money in Pokemon cards, or maybe having a diversified portfolio of things where you want just to have more different assets rather than just the stocks or any other types of investments, or if you just care about collecting, or if you really want to care about speculating something because you want to gamble a little bit, it's important to know all those four. <clears throat> so let me just give you a little bit of my take on how each of these ones actually are important for the Pokemon collector space and why it's important to have them in the in the collectible space because each of them have a specific role that helps the whole bubble, the whole ecosystem in, in the space. As I said when I started explaining speculation, speculation is very important in the Pokemon world space of collectibles because even if you have all the data, right? Let's say you did all your homework and everything. Sometimes you need a certain level of a speculation. A speculator is needed in the market because they will be the brave people of the market, right? The people that will say, I don't care, I know for sure that my heart is certain that this card is going to be very valuable in the future. And so they keep it, and they, they keep it in a pristine condition, and they save it over time because uh, they are truly believers in that item. And some of them will hit jackpot, it's just like when you're gambling in Las Vegas, sometimes you will hit the jackpot, sometimes you will not. Uh, and that's why the speculation is important. Even when you do all your homework and, and you, you analyze all the data, there's going to be certain levels of speculation, okay? So speculators are important because of that. Now, a collector is important because they will just save everything that they care about, right? The reason why we have so much cards today and why we have so much sealed product still in the market, which is not that much in, uh, in comparison to other years, by the way, uh, <clears throat> It's because collectors, collectors save them, right? They have their collections. It's totally like, oh, I just found my collection from 20 years ago in my closet, right? Uh, and, and we're going to talk about how to collect and how to save your collection properly in the next video. So make sure to stay tuned because I'll show you how to keep your collection safe so that in 20 years when you find it in the closet, it's still in near mint condition. Uh, but we thank collectors because of that. The third one is the investor. The investor is the one that cares about the money. And it's important because the investors are what drives the market upwards, okay? Uh, an investor is the one that sets a price for an item and it doesn't sell it until that market reaches that level. But it's setting that kind of stone, that stepping stone to say, I know based on my homework that the asset in five years is going to reach to this level. And they're basically kind of driving the market upwards right? They're driving that market upwards, they set a price, and they don't move it until the right bid comes in. Just to put as an example, and it's not like I'm selling you anything, but I just wanted to tell, to tell this example. I have a, a promotional Suicune card. It's a shiny Suicune from 2000. Uh, they gave them away as a lottery in, uh, in Japan, and there are only a thousand examples, and I have a PSA 10, and I have it for sale. Now, Based on the previous example of liquidity that we showed in the previous video and my homework and everything, I know that the price of that specific item is not there yet. I know it's not in the 1400s and there are other people that have them for sale for almost $2,000 and I know it's not there yet, but I know based on my homework that steadily over time it will get there. It's not an asset that grows that fast because the liquidity and volume is not there, but it's steadily going to grow over there because it's rare, because it's in mint condition, it's a PSA 10, and, uh, and because it's now getting older, right? So it's growing up in value like a wine. Over time, they get better, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, just that, that's as an example of, of how an investor kind of sets up that mark stone and it drives the market upwards, okay? Now, a flipper. Flipper, what's the importance of the flipper? The flippers keep the market active. 
it keeps the market alive and it keeps people interested in things because they are constantly renovating portfolio and, and things to sell and they make a lot of effort to actually sell them because they care about selling them fast. So the flippers for me are not a bad thing for the market. We see flippers all the time in every single market. We have people that flip houses, right? They buy them cheap, renovate them, boom, sell them very fast. We have uh, in the stock market, we have uh, flippers as well. I mean, there's people that do uh, stocks uh, exchange on a daily basis, uh, day stock trading, it's called, or a weekly basis. So it's people that just care about the immediate uh, return of that investment. They buy cheap, sell it, uh, sell it when it's high that day. Um, so we have flippers in every single market. When there's flippers in a market, it means the market is healthy. It means that there's money in the market. And for me, it's great to see that the Pokemon collectible space has that many flippers right now. And the reason why I'm excited about this is because it means that there's a lot of money to be made in the Pokemon space. And that, that for me as an investor and for me as a collector, um, it's exciting because it means that it shows a lot of promise in the future. A lot of people are interested in buying, selling, and uh, keeping assets that will eventually keep growing over time. And that's why it's important of the flippers in the market as well. When you don't see flippers and you see less people selling, that's a concern. That means that that market is going dry. And when that market's starting to go dry, it means it's going to be dry for a long period of time, maybe a short period of time, but it's going to be dry for a period of time until it ramps up or it never ramps up. It could just wither away and die, okay? <clears throat> so essentially those are the four different types and it doesn't mean that you are either a flipper or a collector or an investor or a speculator. You could be four of them, right? You can be flipping certain things, you could be collecting others, you could be investing in others and you could be speculating in others. Uh, but it's important for you to make a conscious decision of what you're going to do with that asset in order to understand how to sell that asset properly, how to keep it properly or how to... Um, actually understand that return of investment that you will have over time and that's why I thought making this video was important hopefully you like it hopefully you found something interesting out of this video and you learned something if you did make sure to hit that thumbs up and uh, let me know in the comment section what do you think where in which bucket did you think you fall into the, are you a speculator an investor a flipper or a collector or you're all of them let me know in the comment section and um, if you haven't done so make sure to subscribe hit that notification bell so that you can get informed into anything that we're doing in this channel hope to see you in the next video until next time gotta collect them all